This was a scary problem for me when I was solving physics. I almost lost my confidence in it. But after I finally solved it, I got one key learning that I could transfer it to a lot of other problems and I wanna share that with you. So here's the problem. We have an innocent looking equilateral triangle at the ends of which we have three people standing and we'll label it A, B, C, like we usually do in physics. And here's the thing. They all start running towards each other. So A starts running towards B, B starts running towards C, and C starts running towards A. Let's say the speed at which they run is V, and that's a constant. And let's say that length of the triangle is A, length of the sides is A, so all the three sides are A. Here's the question. If, we, if these people are always pointing towards each other, if A is always running towards B, B is always running towards C, and C is always running towards A, after how long do they meet? We can assume that they start running together at time t equal to zero. The question then is, after how long would they meet? And when I first look at this question, my first reaction is, what? What's even, I don't even understand what's going on. Why would they even meet? Isn't A running towards B this in this direction? How would it meet? Oh, then I realize, oh, okay, okay. The question is, A will always be pointing towards B and B will always be pointing towards C and so on. And so now I'm, I'm trying to visualize this and here's the problem. I know that A is pointing towards B, but I don't know should I think of A as pointing towards where the B is right now or where B is going to be because B is moving and that was confusing. So here's how you tackle when things are continuously moving. You can assume, you can take small time step and in that time you can assume that their velocity stays the same. So over here, I can assume for a small time, A's velocity vector is gonna be in this direction, B's velocity will stay in this direction, and C's velocity will be in that direction. Which means, in that small time, A will come from here to here. B would have traveled the exact same distance here. C would have traveled the exact same distance here. And now, we can update their velocity. We can now say, aha, the new velocity of A is going to be towards B. It will have the same speed, because a constant speed, but it'll move towards B, so it'll be pointing towards B. Similarly, B will again update its velocity, it's gonna be pointing towards C, and C will be pointing towards A. And we will repeat. We'll again wait for a small time interval. We'll assume this velocity is a constant in that time interval, and that means your A would have traveled a little bit further, B would have traveled a little bit further, C would have traveled a little bit further. And you can keep on doing this. Now we'll update their velocities, which means A will be pointing towards B, B will be pointing towards C, C will be pointing towards A. And we keep doing that again and again, and we can now visualize their motion. And you can kind of see, ah, they're now all going to go in a, in a spiral, like, not, not a spiral, in a curve like this. And you can kind of sort of see that they're gonna meet somewhere at the center. Now this question makes sense. And if we were to look at what would actually be happening, because this, this velocity will be continuously changing, then the final picture would look somewhat like this. Now we have visualized the problem. We need to figure out how long it takes for them to all meet towards the center. Now, how do I do that? I know the speed, the speed is gonna be the same V, but I don't know the, the distance. This is a very weird curve distance. I don't know what that is. So how the hell am I supposed to find the time taken? And after spending a lot of time on this problem, I realized here's the secret to solving not just this problem, but all other problems like this. When you see that the most straightforward way doesn't give you the answer, you have to change your perspective. I know that sounds vague, but in physics it would mean a few things. One, it could mean you change your reference frames. Or another way to think about it is you change the problem statement a little bit. Here's what I mean. So our original problem asks us how long it takes for them to meet, right? But if we go back to the kind of pictures that we drew, we can see something else. We can see that this original triangle that we began with, that triangle starts becoming smaller and smaller. Let me show you. So you have this big triangle with length A to begin with. A little later in time, look, the triangle becomes smaller, becomes smaller, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So what do you think is gonna happen when they all meet? That triangle is going to vanish. That triangle's size is going to be zero. The length is going to be zero, which means we can, the, another way to look at this question is we can ask, hey, how long does it take for the length of this triangle to go to zero? 
That's our new perspective. If we can figure that out, we're done, and it looks like we can kind of sort of do that. But how do you do that? Well, for that, I'm asking myself, what's making the length of that triangle shrink? Let me get rid of the other triangles, and what I'll do now is I'll take this triangle and I will rotate it so that it's aligned with the bigger triangle, and we can see the picture clearly. What's making the length shrink? Well, it's the fact that A is moving towards B, but it's not just that. You can also see it's shrinking from here. Somehow B also happens to be moving towards A. Why is that happening? It's happening because although B's velocity vector is towards C, that velocity has some component in the direction of that A, and that component is making B also move towards A. And if I draw another triangle, same picture. A is moving towards B with the velocity V. B is moving towards A with the component of the velocity in its direction. And these two, since they are moving towards each other, eventually when they meet, that's, that's what we need to figure out, how long it takes for that to happen. In other words, all I need to do is figure out what their relative approach speed is. Think about it, they began with a separation of A and they end with a separation of zero because they're gonna meet each other. So I know the distance they're gonna travel. If I know, if I can figure out what the relative speed is, then I can figure out what the time it takes. Now would be a good time to pause the video, complete the dots, and get the answer. All right, let's look at it over here. I know A is traveling towards B with a speed V. B has a component in this direction, and that component is going to be, this velocity is V, so that component is going to be V cos of this angle. But what is this angle? Well, since it is equilateral triangle, that is 60 degrees. So this is going to be V cos 60 degrees, or that's going to be V divided by two. So B is approaching A with the speed V by two. A is approaching B with the speed V. What's their relative speed? Since they're approaching each other, we can just add them and we can say the relative speed, I'll just call it as V relative, is going to be V plus V by two, that's three V by two. This is their relative approach speed, which means if I look at from B's perspective, then everything appears, B appears to be at rest and A appears to be moving towards B along this direction with the speed three V by two. What is the relative distance that they're covering? From B's perspective, A was at a distance A to begin with, and then at the end of time, um, it has come and met, so the distance that they have traveled relatively is, the distance they have traveled relatively is just A. So what is the time taken to meet? The time taken would be, well, speed equals distance by time, so time equals distance by speed, so it's gonna be A divided by three V by two, and the two can come on the top, and there we go. This is the time taken to meet each other. If you think you've got this, here's your next challenge problem. It's gonna look very different, but the same principle can be applied like I told earlier. Change your perspective. 